Mood disorders affects individuals of all ages, from childhood through uh, late life. Depression has now become the number one uh, most disabling condition worldwide. This is a major problem and it's not one that one researcher is going to solve. It's, uh, it's a uh, problem that's going to uh, require a uh, tight-knit group of basic scientists, translational and clinical neuroscientists, clinicians, psychotherapists, all together sitting down at the table and working together. At the Stanford Mood Disorder Center, we have investigators from various backgrounds, various scientific backgrounds, applying various methods to try and understand the biology of the disorders and then try to develop targeted treatments for individuals so that they in fact can achieve uh, remission from their depression or bipolar disorder. I study the biological variables and risk factors that predict the development of chronic disorders, um, specifically major depression and bipolar disorder. We start off with um, child and adolescents um, uh, who are maybe uh, offspring of parents with serious mood disorders, and we follow them over time to see who goes on to develop a major mood disorder like bipolar disorder or depression, and who actually is resilient and doesn't have any mood disorders at all. I believe that if it's predictable, it's preventable. So we have the opportunity in this amazing space here at Stanford to investigate and discover the next generation of treatments that can prevent kids from developing mood problems lifelong. Psychology and cognitive neuroscience are coming together. They come together in part because of brain imaging. In our group, we're looking to combine a lot of data on each individual. We know there's a lot of different types of depression, really, and we're wanting to characterize that using a brain circuit model. Patients um, participate in an fMRI, functional magnetic resonance scan, um, and they do a variety of different tasks, and through those different tasks, we can probe the circuits uh, in different ways to identify their unique dysfunction and then using that to be able to guide treatment more precisely to make it targeted for the individual and their specific brain dysfunction. For any treatment, 70% would be a high success rate, particularly over time. So we need to have new treatments. Much of our work over the past 20 plus years has been in the uh, development of novel pharmacotherapies for depression, particularly for resistant depression. Drugs like ketamine and ketamine analogs. Uh, we're interested in opiate uh, type drugs and their role, as well as potentially some very um, old agents that may have a, a role to play in the treatment of depression, like psilocybin. In addition, we uh, have been actively studying biomarkers that might help us predict who's going to respond to what kind of treatment. Uh, these have included things like quantitative EEG. Uh, as well as pharmacogenomics. And with the advent of some of these, we may be able to tailor treatments uh, in a much more sophisticated and refined way than we could do previously. We have treatments that are in fact brain stimulatory treatments, electroconvulsive therapy, repeated transmagnetic stimulation. We have other kinds of brain stimulation that we are trying to develop here. We've developed one called accelerated thetaverse stimulation and that form uh, appears to both work uh, way faster than normal TMS and uh, potentially better, uh, allowing for uh, the, the uh, potential of uh, implementing an approach like this on an inpatient unit, uh, the first of its kind. We recently published a paper in Brain showing that uh, in a small group of uh, six uh, patients with the most highly refractory form of depression, we were able to get uh, four of them into remission. One of them uh, was a responder close to remission, uh, which is really good uh, early data suggesting that we can take care of the, the most severe depressed patients out there. We are in an era right now of personalized medicine. It's at the forefront. The ideal of being able to take an individual and know really about their individual physiology at a fundamental cellular level using the stem cell model that gives us unprecedented insights into what the deficits might be underlying a disorder like depression. 
So we are optimally matching an individual to the best treatments possible, not just based on the cellular physiology and response to treatment, but also based on their clinical phenotyping and the symptoms they present with, as those two may actually indicate very different treatment approaches. This can only be done by having individuals who are geneticists, who are brain imagers, who are behavioral uh, biologists, etc., working together with clinicians, adult and child, psychiatrists and psychologists, to come up with uh, new information to help guide the development of more effective treatments. We offer hope. We offer hope to those that suffer from depression and bipolar disorder, to their families who have to help them, and to the public at large.